Got it. Okay. So yeah. So again, uh, yeah, I hope everyone had a really good Christmas. Um, and we, we've made it a, a kind of a custom every year, uh, right after Christmas, we shut down the church for an, uh, for, uh, for the week after Christmas, the office is shut. And then the Sunday morning after is shut. And the reason why we do this is so, uh, as a church, there's a lot of serving going on in our church. We do a lot of outreach. Uh, so we want to give our volunteers and our staff a break. Just basically say, just take a break. Don't think about church for, for a week, focus on your family. Um, and, and just refresh. Uh, it's so important that we take time to refresh and um, to revitalize. And Jesus says in Mark chapter 6, uh, verse 31 and 32, Jesus said, Let us, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they were so busy that they didn't even have time to take care of their own needs. They're just going, 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 going. Um, and then in verse 32, it says, so they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. I think it's important that we we make time uh, to have a quiet place. You know, there's it's important to be alone, to have time alone, a place to be quiet. Um, because rest is important. You know, how many know rest is really important? Um, and my hope is that each and every one of you would take time in this, you know, busy season to just rest and to, um, to learn to take even one day in seven to, to, to have relational rest. I say relational rest because I think the Bible says God rested. He was still in relationship. So I think it's important that one day in seven, we take time for rest, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on a certain day. In the Old Testament, the Sabbath was Friday evening throughout to Saturday. But today that we take one day in seven and just really focus on rest. Because when we rest, uh, it makes time for personal reflection and evaluation. And so it's so important that we kind of reflect where we're at um, and evaluate where, where we're at in, in our faith journey. Okay. Uh, we see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, it says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And then we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5, Paul says again, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith, or to see if your faith is genuine, is what he's saying. Test yourself. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed to uh, the test of genuine faith. Okay, so to examine yourself, um, you you need to, you need to be in a state of rest. And this is what I've learned is that um, when you're busy and you're going, 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 and you're doing a hundred things and and you're trying to accomplish this and accomplish that, uh, there's no time to stop and evaluate the genuineness of your faith. Whether you're going through, you know tough times relationally, you're struggling financially, you're, you know, just busy doing life. It takes that time to really uh, slow down and be at a place of rest so you can examine, am I in fear or am I in faith? Okay. Um, what areas of my life are still not under the Lordship of Christ? And it takes time to stop and just reflect uh, and to process through that and, and think about that. Uh, am I yielding my thoughts to Christ? Or am I yielding my thoughts to the enemy's kingdom? And so self-reflection happens only when you're resting, not when you're working. And that's why I love the psalmist. David talked about how he rested um, on his bed and he meditated on the Lord day and night. And we see all these scriptures about focus and rest. And I think that is so important. The scripture says, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Okay. Um, and they will not become weary. And so this is important that we understand that rest is so important. Uh, and in 2024, I'm going to be sharing a message the second week of January where we're really going to be focusing on uh, on rest and um, what that means. Because you can, you can be at rest and accomplish a lot of things for God, or you can be busy, 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 and not accomplish much. And so we're going to talk about that. Awesome. No. So people are coming on. If you guys don't mind just muting yourself. Um, and then, uh, who's that? There we go, Brian. Uh, Martin. Martin, good to see you, buddy. 
Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year's. Um, hey, church fam. Here's today's announcements. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Good to see you, Martin. So, uh, so th there's there's a real need for waiting on the Lord, which happens in resting as well. Um, and without waiting, there's no anointing. Uh, there's no anointing when we don't waste, when we don't wait. And uh, I love when you read the book of Job, uh, Job, we know we, we read the book of Job and we realize that he's going through a really dark time and he's having to deal with the sickness and this disease that he's fighting. Um, and, and he begins to tell a story in Job 29 and he recalls a time when the anointing was upon his life. And the anointing of God, he describes it in, in uh, uh, chapter 29. And, and if you read chapter 29, it's an awesome chapter because it talks about the, the fruitfulness of his life when the Lord was present with him. And so he says this in verse 5. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were all around me, when my steps were washed with butter. Some translations say they're bathed with butter. And so this is kind of like uh it kind of talks talks to me about easy street you know you know when your steps are easy it just hey this is easy doors are opening things are happening i i don't have to work hard because job was saying there was a time when the lord was with me and it was like it was like everything was easy street my feet were bathed with butter and the rock poured out for me streams of oil and so there was lots of refreshing lots of uh easy street okay and when god orders something uh, God, he pays for it. When we do, when we order something, we pay for it, right? And so when, when we're doing stuff for the Lord, we have to realize that um, it, when God's grace and favor is on something, it's like our feet are bathed in butter. It's it's easy street. Now, it doesn't mean there's not going to be tough times. It doesn't mean we ha don't have to plow and strategize and work hard to break ground. But you know the difference when God's favor is on something you're doing. And when it's just you're working by yourself. OK. Um, back in 2019, uh, many of you know, the Salvation Army closed. Um, and that at that point, Captain Rob, who is a minister there at the church, asked if I would take uh, if our church would take the hamper and the lunch program. If we'd continue with it. Um, the Salvation Army had gone from. 15 years ago from close to 200 members down to seven members, mostly family members, but they were still, they were still feeding the community and doing a great work. And so, um, so we did, we said, yeah, we'll take Catherine's kitchen. This was early 2019. And we changed the name uh, from Salvation Army meal program to Catherine's kitchen. Um, and I don't know, has everyone, has everyone here uh, seen the, the promotional promotional video that we did a few years back to kind of describe Catherine's Kitchen. I don't know if you did or not, but I'm going to see if I can play it um, just so you guys can see it. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to try to share my screen here. It's just a little video. It kind of gives you an overview of, um, let's see here. Can everyone see my screen here? Okay, I'm going to try playing. William Booth was the founder of the Salvation Army. His wife's name was Catherine Booth, and she had a heart for feeding those in need of a meal. We wanted to honor her memory. The Salvation Army served our community here in Trenton for many years and has done a wonderful job. Uh, but they had moved out of town, and we took over the program. People want to know that they matter. And so when we as a community reach out and do something as simple as providing a meal for someone and knowing them by name and talking with them, uh, it brings hope and it brings encouragement. And sometimes for some people, it gives them the, the strength to take the next step to get, get to a better place. Volunteers are urgently needed in a few different areas. Number one, we need uh, volunteers to run our donation stations through the month of December. Uh, you can come and run a station. That's to raise money for uh, the feeding program and also for the Christmas hamper program. We also need volunteers to come and to cook and to help serve meals throughout the week. And then thirdly, uh, if you want to uh, financially support us, you can do that as well. If you go to our website, katherineskitchen.ca.
Right. So I'm assuming everyone's seen that, but if not, it just kind of gives you a little recap of where we, uh, where we've been in the last four years with Catherine's kitchen. And, and, uh, we spent about four years at just really, um, uh, branding, branding the ministry, um, branding the name and, um, getting known in the community. Uh, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great venture. Uh, I think we burst something that's exciting. Uh, we're known in the community now. Everyone kind of connects at the Crossroads Church with Catherine's Kitchen. Uh, so overall, I think it's been a really, really uh, good thing. So in the, in the next few weeks, actually, we're launching Catherine's Kitchen uh, to become its own entity. So it's kind of like when you have children, there comes a time, praise God, when they get through school, high school, university, college, where they get launched out on their own and they begin to, uh, to uh, you know, live independently from the parents. And we feel that this is the season for Catherine's Kitchen to do that. Uh, we've put together their own charitable number and um, uh, we've launched them out uh, in a couple of weeks, got a, their own separate board. And uh, we're just really exciting. We feel like something's been birthed, something's gonna continue. And I don't know if Pastor Peter's on the line, if you wanted to just unmute yourself and just share for a couple moments uh, what that journey has been like in the last month or so. Are you there, Pastor Peter? No, maybe he's not on the call. Okay. Um, okay, so, so within a very short period of time, probably within a couple couple months, as everything is set up and their own their own uh, charity, um, people will be able to make checks payable directly to Catherine's Kitchen because they'll be their own charity, and so we're really excited um, with that. And so Peter's just sending me a text. He can't get on right now, so that's why he's having a hard time getting on for the call. So he's trying to get on. So, um, so also back in 2022, um, I was brought on to the MNC Ministers Network Canada as a regional director. And had the opportunity to be the uh, to to become the do donation hub for CityServe. Uh, CityServe, as you know, is um, an organization, a charity that runs with all the donations that come back to Amazon, Costco, um, IKEA. Right. So, so we're getting all the returns, and we're able to distribute them back into the community. And so, uh, back in 2022 we got involved in that but what we found was uh we were getting lots of parcels very small parcels we had 18 big skids delivered back in june 2023 and we didn't even know what to do with it we just had so much of it and we had no storage facility uh and i was calling around looking for warehouses and some of you remember what that looked like so i'm going to show you a little slideshow here uh if you just bear with me for a second Just close this here. And the slideshow. Okay, can everybody see this? All right. So this uh, this was um, was a hamper program that we just we just completed, and I just thought it'd be good to show you a couple pictures because. A lot of people never see this. They never see what it looks like uh, when 400 families line up at independent after closing hours to pick up uh, their Christmas hamper. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, if you This line actually wraps all the way around the parking lot. It goes almost down to the street. These are families that are so thankful and so blessed because of you and because of me as we have decided to give and to pour our time into making Christmas special for them. And so these families get a hamper full of food with a turkey. They also get, um, uh, they also get gifts uh, that are given to them for their children if they have children. And so we make Christmas possible for over 430 families. So God just, God is so good. Okay. Uh, here's a picture of <clears throat> Carla and uh, my wife, Camilla with Jim Harrison. Our mayor is so behind the program. He generously donates to the program. He calls me to ask how it's going. He's he's really invested. He's got a big heart, uh, and he's always at the hamper uh, handout. 
uh, when we do the donations. So here's Anita and Tammy uh, ready to sign the, those big lineup of people are about to come in. And there's Hannah and Carla getting ready to do their stuff. And then what happens is we partner with the store and all the store workers uh, prepare all the carts with all the food. And then as they come in, you can see the line of carts. We give each family a cart. And due, due to, uh, uh, you know, liability reasons, we can't show you pictures of all the people coming in. Um, you have to, can't do that. But here it is. Uh, and so City Serve back in June 2023, we got these big six foot boxes full of tiny items. How many remember that, right? That was crazy. And this is what our church looked like. I was a total mess. Uh, we had all these things. And so we were constantly giving away uh, stuff on Sundays and throughout the week, just trying to bless the church. And at that time, I was trying to get an agreement with some different businessmen in the community so that we could uh, get a warehouse for tax receipts. So that way we could store all of our stuff. Every door slammed shut. Every door slammed shut. It was the same thing with uh, well, what I was just talking about, Job, right? The, there was no easy street. There was no bathed in butter feet right we just couldn't make it happen and then uh, so what we did was uh there's our old parking lot before we redid the parking lot and we were giving away stuff we did a uh, a give out yard sale on a saturday and we gave away thousands of dollars worth of stuff to the community that was a great blessing those are some of the smaller items we had clothing and bathing suits and mugs all kinds of good stuff we gave away You can see some of you remember all of this stuff. You didn't know what to do with it all. Um, so here's the interesting thing. So around the same time uh, where the Lord had spoken to, to the eldership team about a year ago that we were going to transition out of the kitchen and that that was going to become something that was going to move outside the church. The same day we put together the new uh, transition team and made the decision we're moving the church out within it was the same day or within the those few days period, I got a phone call. So Amazon, there's a new Amazon warehouse. This is a warehouse uh, in Belleville. It's massive. There are 400 loading docks or something. It's, it's a massive building. There's only two of them in Canada. And these two Amazon warehouses, one is in Calgary and one is in Belleville. They only deal with large items. So beds, tractors, fridges, stoves. Anything that takes two people to move, basically. And there's only two of them in Canada. So I got a phone call from CityServe saying, they're right in Belleville. Would you guys be their main contact? And so I prayed about it and really quickly felt we need to move on this thing. So I made a quick phone call to one of the business people in the community uh, who I had tried to reach out to in the past. And he said, absolutely, I'll lend you a warehouse we can get on this right away. And so God opened the door for us to, you know, begin to move back into city serve. The moment we decided to say, Lord, we're going to let Catherine's kitchen become its own identity. We're going to launch it and trust that you're going to run with it, Lord, with the new team. And we're going to focus on the city serve. Suddenly doors started opening. Within a few more days, I got an email from another businessman in the community says, I have tons of warehouse space. I have a team of leaders that want to work with you. We have trucks that will donate their time. So suddenly all of these doors began to open. So it became easy street. Our feet were bathed with butter. So here we are. So this was, <clears throat> this was when I went to the warehouse and these are some of the items we were getting. As you can see, we have flat screen TVs. We got a lawnmower, um, scooters, uh, all kinds of furniture, kind of stuff. This was at the warehouse. So these, uh, this is the manager standing here uh, on the other side of the skid has become a friend of mine now. And uh, he had told me we're giving away around five transport trucks worth of goods to the community. And we would love it to stay in the Quinty region. And if you don't take it, we'll send it to Ottawa or Kingston. I said, no, no, we're going to take it right here. So he, this is me picking up our first load and there's John, handsome guy there. We're just getting ready to load the truck. And they're really excited about it. This is the new warehouse. Um, 
And as you can see, all of these boxes, this is the stuff that we're receiving from CityServe right now. You can see there's 85 inch TV there. Uh, half the TVs are damaged, uh, the other half are not. But uh, we also have a lot of brand new mattresses. We have bed frames. Um, we have lawnmowers, you name it. You can see the mattresses in the background there. All of these things are coming in. And then, of course, the purpose of doing this is so that we can give it away. You know, freely we receive, freely we give. And just to bless the church. You know, there's someone from our church, some of you know. And um, there's someone in the community that needed a gift for their child. And um, here's Ron getting, uh, is that a portable washing machine and few items for people in his apartment building. There's someone from, I believe, a daycare that came to get some equipment uh, for her daycare. So it's it's been it's be, it's becoming a real blessing for us to be able to do this. Uh, here's some toys we got um, to give out. Those are those are very expensive. That's about thirty five hundred dollars worth of toys right there. Okay, so it's pretty exciting what uh, what God is doing, and we really feel that that God's blessing is upon um, upon this. And so what, what we've decided to do is we're going to just take this one step at a time. And as long as there's grace on it, we're going to just continue to do it. We have people stepping up who want to volunteer and having our own warehouse has made it easy to do so. So we're, we're excited about that. Amen. So I just, before I go on any further here, I just want to open up if anyone has any questions um, just unmute yourself and ask a question. Any questions at all? I have one. Um, yes. Where is Catherine's Kitchen being located? So Catherine's Kitchen actually uh, is moving over to St. James Anglican Church. Um, they have a big basement and a brand new kitchen that they renovated. It's actually a really good setup. They got a wheelchair lift and it, it's, it's going to be a really good location. Uh, one of the other issues we've been dealing with um, is the businesses in the downtown area um, are finding it a little tough because sometimes we have 60 people lined up outside of the church on the Sunday morning and, some of them feel it's affecting their, their business. Um, so St. James is kind of tucked away a little bit. And so people can feel more free to linger around the, the building without creating any kind of disturbance. Um, so I think it's going to be a really good fit. And we have a great relationship uh, with, uh, G uh, with uh, uh, T Pastor Timps in there. Um, what's his name? Steve. So early um steve and mary lou timpson and we've had a great relationship and they have a we have a, a lot in common so i think it's going to be good will they uh will they provide this the personnel or will crossroads still provide the personnel for it well what what's happening i think we have um i don't know if there's anyone on the call from Catherine's kitchen here but i think we have over 50 volunteers um and I think out of that volunteer base, we might have five or six from our church. Most of the volunteers come from the Wesleyan Church, uh, different different community uh, partners, uh, which is a good thing. So we have volunteers coming in from everywhere. So Carl has been working with the volunteers. And from what I understand, most of them, if not all of them, are ready to go over and continue to serve at the other location. Yes, we are. Yeah, There's we're looking my... forward to the big kitchen and. I know some are looking forward to the big sinks. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of set up for what we're finding right now is that uh, we've really outgrown our space. You know, um, Carla has been amazing. She's, she's a, she's a magnet. She's got an anointing for attracting food. So we have food everywhere. <laughs> our freezers are full. Our cupboards are full. We come in through the week. The stage has become a storage facility. So God's blessed it and it just needed a new home. 
and God has provided one. So we're excited. Any other questions or comments? Good. Okay. Let me just finish off if we're good here. Go back to my PowerPoint for a moment. Okay. So the church, the church has six responsibilities, and I just wanted to run through them briefly here. So the six responsibilities of any church, any given church, uh, number one is to teach biblical doctrine and to worship together. Very, very important. That's the you know, the basic purpose of the church. Number two, to have fellowship and to observe the Lord's Supper. The Lord said, every time you meet, do this in remembrance of me. So uh, doing the Lord's Supper, having fellowship one with another. We do that in our connect groups. Number three is uh, to pray and proclaim the gospel. Um, my house should be a house of prayer. Uh, number four, uh, the church is also... All, also to minister to the needs of others. Now I highlighted this one because for the last three years, this has really been uh, the focus of our church. We really focus on ministering to the needs of others. Okay. Number five, uh, the purpose of the church is to equip believers for the work of the ministry. And number six, to be a lighthouse in the community. So these are the six things that every church needs to do to be a biblical church. Okay. So those two things we've really focused and we've done well, um, but we've neglected some of the other areas. And I think as we move into 2024, really feeling as an eldership team, the Lord leading us to re really focus on some of these other things as well. In 2024, we want to teach biblical doctrine and worship. Now we've been doing that. We teach the Bible, but to really focus on teaching in a way that we're helping families, um, young students, seniors, to really take the word of God and implement it into their lives to see breakthrough and to see change in their life. So we're going to really focus on discipleship in a basic way. Number two, to have fellowship, observe the Lord's Supper. We're going to focus more on fellowship. Um, point number one, so I'll give you an idea. So starting in 2024, this month in January, we're going to start doing uh, once a month, we're doing a deeper night. So a Sunday night where we come together and we're just going to worship and pray. No agenda, no timeline. Just just let's get in the Lord's presence. Let's pursue God for miracles. Let's operate in the gifts. So it's going to be a night for those of us who just want to go deeper and we can't really do it on a Sunday morning. So that's uh, we're going to focus on that. Number three, I uh, want to focus more on prayer, uh, proclaiming the gospel more in our community. Uh, these are the ones we've done well, number four. And number five, we want to equip believers. So we've been talking about uh, starting a Bible school in the near future. Um, we're going to spend some time in 2024 trying to get our leadership capacity at a place where we can uh, have margin to, to have a Bible school. It's not going to happen immediately, but we want to equip believers. We've been wanting to develop a highway to wholeness part two. I just haven't had time. So now we're going to focus on that. And then the last one, be a lighthouse in the community. Okay. So 2023, we were a busy church. We had connect groups, men's breakfast once a month. We relaunched the women's brunch. Women, you can all go, yay. Because I know that was exciting. My wife really enjoys doing that. Uh, youth conference in February. Be in health conference we did in November. We had two highway to wholeness weekends. Preteens and youth every Tuesday, young adults every week, Catherine's Kitchen and City Serve as outreach, Festival on the Bay as outreach, and then Christmas Hamper Program, plus roughly 104 Sunday morning services. So we did a ton of stuff in 2023. One of the things we're going to be doing in 2024 is cutting back how much we do so that we can put more time into what we're doing and doing it better. And the, the best example for that is there's some, I'm not going to say the car manufacturers because I don't want to, some of you like certain cars, but some car manufacturers have like 15 cars you can choose from when you go to the lot. 
they have so many cars, but they're not built very well where you can go to a Toyota and you have like, you can choose from four or five different cars and they've taken one item and made it excellent. And that's what we want to do in 2024 is we want to really focus on taking the things that we do and focus on the ones we do well and do them better and maybe cut back on some other things. So that's kind of what we're, we're thinking about. I'm going to do a launch service second week of January uh, to share my heart a little bit more about where we're going. And we're very excited. Um, also, if you want to give, this will be today, I guess, is your last day to give. If you want to get a tax receipt for, for uh, you know, for 2023, uh, you can feel free to give next week, but you won't get a tax receipt until the end of next year. Um, but it's so, so exciting to see everyone. Uh, let me just stop my share here. Awesome. So does anyone, does anyone have any other questions before we close off our live stream or any thoughts? I'd like to hear from, there's Pastor Peter. Finally. There, <laughs> did you just get on? Well, we've been all we've been listening to you, but we couldn't unmute. We couldn't get anything working at all. So, oh, wow. so we finally just ran it off the cell phone. <laughs> so do you want to share any thoughts about the transition journey you were on with Catherine's Kitchen? Uh, well, I didn't catch everything that you shared just because I was trying to get on and fiddling around here. So, uh, but no, I think I think you pretty much from what I heard, sounds like you covered everything, but. Yeah, just, just I, I don't know if you shared this, but just we had a team working on making this transition as as Bill was inquiring there about where it was going, which is, yes, going to St. James. Uh, working on it for the, about the last three, three to four months, I guess. And uh, yeah, so everything's really come together. We're really excited. I think it's going to be a good fit going over there. So uh, we're excited about that. And of course, we still have things to do. You were sharing about... Uh, it's going to eventually have its own charitable number in that. So, of course, we have to get the board set up for that. We have to get our goals set up for, for the coming year. And, uh, yeah, what kind of goals they want to have moving forward in a new location. And so lots, lots of steps still going before, but we're excited. Uh, it's, it's going to transition. At this point, it's looking like it's going to transition the second week of January. So Owen and some of us will be going in there this coming week and getting some electrical done and some painting of a couple of storage floor room floors that they need done. So uh, yeah, so things are happening and unfolding. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. It's kind of like we we had an opportunity as a church to take something to to you know and to to birth it into its own entity and we're we're excited about it. Yeah. It's a good move and then we're going to move on to some new projects. At, that the Lord uh, has his hand on. So anyway, um, and then tonight, of course, tonight at, from nine o'clock till 1230, we're going to have worship, prayer and uh, fellowship and games. Uh, lots of food. We're, we're, we've got, um, I think, four large briskets. We're going to we, we're smoking some brisket. We're going to we're going to eat, have fun tonight together. Uh, if you want to come, it's open for everyone. You can bring a potluck. Everyone's bringing a dish, um, a salad or something. Uh, yeah, so we're really, really excited about meeting tonight. Uh, so if you're coming to that, just let us know. Send an email to Melanie, and we'll make sure that there's space for that. Yeah, it's awesome. Any thoughts from anyone else? Just want to jump in there and just... Uh, it's uh, me again, Pastor. Yeah. Is there... I, I haven't noticed anything for the seniors in the way of, say, a Bible study or something like that. Do you have anything on the... Like we're, we're, experience with that yeah and i think i think that's one of the things we're gonna we're gonna have a little more time and space to really work as a staff uh around setting up making sure that there's no gaps in our ministries i know that we we uh we've been wanting we've talked about having a seniors ministry or having ministry specifically geared for uh for seniors so that's something that we can talk about well, thank you Good, Martin. And Jen, she's got her head blue. Yeah, there you go. We just want to say thank you to our ATC family and you guys and the leadership. It's like, we're still very happy and our children are very happy that we became part of this church. And 
we want to help, you know, invite more people to the church this year and so many exciting things going on. So they should benefit from it too. Absolutely. We've been getting to know some new people and they love the family atmosphere at ATC. Their kids love it. They love the kids ministry. So it's been really great to get to know them. We just had dinner with them last night and now they're bringing more of their family. So it's really good to see it growing. Thank you so much, guys. We love you guys. Anybody else? John. John's been a great blessing. He's helped me with a couple loads from Amazon and it's, uh, it's interesting what can come out of that. So thank you, John. Anyone else who just want to share or you have a testimony or something? Stan's been a real blessing too with City Serve and serving in Catherine's kitchen. He's done a lot. And Stan's uh, done lots of fixing with some people's appliances in our churches too. So yeah, just give a shout out to him too. Yeah, he's been a he's been a major blessing. And uh, yeah. Done some painting as well. Uh for the stairways going up to the uh, kids ministry. And... Yep. Oh, he's been great. And Wendy's son, Darcy has been coming out and helping out big time. Uh, really has a passion for what we're doing with city serve. So we appreciate him as well. Um, yeah. Everyone's been great. So thank you everyone. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, pastor Peter, would you mind closing us off in prayer? And oh, not at all. So. yeah. Well, Father God, we just uh, we thank you that as we come to the end of this year, uh, Lord God, in, in the sense of the end of our lives, God, we want to finish well. But even this year, God, I just pray that as we're finishing out this year, that, um, that you, you would just sense your presence, God, and all that each one of us are doing today. And and uh, we just look forward to our gathering together tonight. Um, Lord, we just thank you. You are the one who's been so faithful to bring us this far uh, as, as individuals, as families, and even as a corporate church family. And, and God, we thank you for your promise that God, you said the gates of hell would not prevail against us as a church. And, uh, Lord, as we're looking at just launching forth God into 2024, Lord, we are just believing you father God to, to cause us to continue to build on the firm foundation that you've given to us. And so God, I just pray your blessing upon each one of those God that are listening this morning. And even I know those who aren't able to tune in, uh, Father, we just pray your blessing, just overtaking them. God, as it says in, in Deuteronomy 28, Father, that your blessing will just overtake them. And, uh, in 2024. So God, we, we thank you. We look to you, God. Um, there's nothing that we can do apart from you. And so we just ask that you would unfold your purposes, your vision, and uh, God, just the equipping of your saints here in this local body, uh, God, as we move forward into this new year. And we bless you and thank you, desiring that you would be glorified above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Peter. Um, and again, obviously, I'm away next Sunday, so I won't see you guys next Sunday. My wife and I are away with the kids, but the following Sunday, we'll do our kickoff service Pastor Peter will do a great job bringing the word next Sunday, but when I come back, I'll share a bit more vision and strategy for uh, 2025, uh, 2024. I will almost jumped a year. I won't do that. Awesome. Well, God bless you guys, and we will see. We'll see. Hopefully, see everyone tonight for our party. So, if not, we'll see you soon. God bless. God bless. See you later. God bless.